I was in the, the United States Navy from the 1943 to 1946, almost three years, serving on the USS California, which was sunk at Pearl Harbor and then restored and brought back to the United States. I was a third class storekeeper in supply on the California. My battle station on the USS California was in as a shellman, and those were three great big huge guns. My job was to put shells into the breech of the gun, and it, it took four 100-pound bags of, of powder to shoot that. And I lost my hearing from, from being in that service, in that job, because they gave you no protection. So I'm very happy to have served my country by being in the Navy for, for this period of time. And so I value my life very much. And I am appreciative of being able to, to be raised in the United States of America. This organization is somebody that's giving respect to those people who have died previously in, in defending the freedoms that we have. And organizations like this and the hours that they put in for both the honor flight and this are tremendous. And for this, I'm grateful. I was in the United States Marine Corps and I was in the 3rd Tank Battalion, 3rd Marine Division. I'm a Korean vet. I wouldn't change a day, really. If, if, it, uh, if you do, you know, you're gonna mess up your whole background or your whole life. So I've always enjoyed everything that I've done. I never really went into Korea itself, um, all because of what, I don't know, but you go where they tell you you're gonna go. So I ended up in Japan with the tank battalion um, and we were on standby in case they needed extra help in Korea. I felt that I gave something to the country uh, for our flag and everybody that was in the service. I have been connected with the VA hospital in Phoenix and they have done so much for me that I wouldn't change a day. I have had all kinds of various illnesses or various things. I've got a pacemaker, all kinds of things. I hold them quite high. I have always felt uh, a great deal about serving our country uh, for what I did. And uh, I wouldn't change a day. I was a non-commissioned officer. Uh, I was with 1st Cavalry Division in Vietnam, spent 19 months over there. I spent eight and a half years in the military, Army. Uh, most of the time after uh, the training that I had and everything, uh, I was an instructor. My main job was to uh, train personnel to survive, mostly in reconnaissance and uh, hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat and leadership department at Fort Benning, Georgia. Recipient of three Purple Hearts and uh, uh, 27th April 1969, I had 43 men wounded and five dead, five killed, and fighting our way out of that ambush and uh, surviving it. That would be the main thing. That's the main thing that I remember every day of my life. And the older I get, the more I appreciate uh, uh, things that really mean things like uh, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, uh, life in America, and, and uh, God, and freedom. Freedom's pretty far up there on the top of my list. VMLC is just like, uh, there's a lot of organizations, but they don't have the money, and they don't have the wherewithal to help a lot of these people. And uh, sometimes some of the help, even if they do have it, it takes so long for them to get it, and a lot of these vets need it right then and there. 
And that's what makes it so good is when you can pick up the phone and call somebody like VMLC and they're there. You don't know how much that helps when somebody is just, you know, it could, they could be the last phone call they ever make. And when you think about that, man, it's good to have organizations that will reach out and do these things like the VMLC, man, and that's, that's what makes the difference. I was in the Air Force and I re medically retired as a tech sergeant. Um, my first job in the Air Force was a laboratory technician and I deployed in 2006 where I was a blood bank technician for the mass casualties, ORs, and trauma bays. And then from there I cross trained into uh, Air Force Special Operations as a Special Missions Aviator where I basically was a loadmaster and aerial gunner on an AC-130 gunship. Yeah, I was injured on duty um, in 2012. I had to do an altitude chamber uh, training where you go up to 25,000 feet and uh, I basically acquired a brain injury from there without going without oxygen for too long and uh, it left with lingering effects and um, in the end I was medically discharged. First, you're angry and upset that everything gets taken away so quickly. But um, you know, you go through the process and you learn that you know you come out of it stronger than you are, and everything is going to get better. And uh, the end, you still have your service, you still have your memories and experience, but there's more to life than that. And um, I've transitioned to serve in my country here in the stateside now, so I'm grateful for that. There's a lot of interesting moments in my service that I'm truly grateful for, but the most rewarding experience for me was uh, after I was injured, I competed in the Warrior Games, and that's with ill, injured, and wounded athletes. And from there, you get to really see how people persevere through uh, injury and really tough times and from there like I learned that you never quit on life and you just never give up and those were all amazing people to meet and i um, glad to call them my friends today. When I was in uh, special ops we had missions where we would fly eight to ten hours a night and sometimes they didn't involve um, just direct targets or anything like that but it was so our ground forces could actually just sleep. They were surrounded by enemy and they just needed rest so that they could fight out the rest of the days. And uh, my crew was grateful to sit there and just provide that surveillance for them or be able to radio in any time that an enemy would be coming forward. And um, those are memories I won't forget, that they, no one died on our watch. They all came out. I think it's, uh, pretty extraordinary to be honored as an Air Force veteran and especially in uh, my hometown of Arizona and if if we can bring awareness to veterans and the sacrifices they go through not only overseas but at home and if there's any way that we can help them out I think um, other veterans need to get involved and it's an organization we can all get behind. I served my first tour in the 82nd Airborne Division in North Carolina, and my second tour was with the 1st Cavalry Division in Texas, and I repaired a missile system called the Avenger. Since I was in high school and I had no direction, I figured that, that joining the military was a good place to start. I'm very glad I made that choice. I served from 93 to 97, and then from 2002 to 2005. The most one significant moment that stands out in my mind is when we first we first convoyed into Iraq and we, we started hearing uh, mortars go off and basically one of our senior enlisted people was saying, well, welcome to Iraq. <laughs> Overall, it was the camaraderie of being in the military. Having served in a third world country, it makes you very grateful and thankful for uh, little things like running water. I definitely am appreciative of what our 
military does for us, now having served in the military. The VMLC, I feel invested in me so that I could act as a conduit to help other veterans because I, I've helped um, some homeless veterans. I've also went and helped out um, as far as being a homeless caseworker with the city of Tempe. And the VMLC stepped into my life at a time where I, I, I needed some work on my car. And it's such a, it's, it's such a conundrum because I didn't have like a couple of grand, you know, a couple thousand dollars to drop into fixing my car. In a nutshell, the VMLC saved me as far as getting my car operable again and, and allowing me to work and serve the community. Thank you.